Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astri Krasnichi. I'm certified Cisco CCNA and CCMP trainer. Okay, so we start with your CCNA routine and switching course. CCNA routine and switching course is divided in four semesters. In here we cover covering semester uh, CCNA semester one, introduction to network. When you finish semester one and semester two, routine and switching essentials, you can go for the exam ICND1 or Interconnecting Cisco Network Devices Part 1. You can attempt that exam, or you can finish all four semesters and then try a CCNA routine and switching exam. But CCNA routine and switching exam is being separated in two exams as well, so you can kind of like a split it because it's quite difficult exam if you take one exam. As far as the money goes, um, you're not going to pay any more because you're doing two exams. The price is the same. So if it's 250 pounds for CCNA routine and switching. If you do ICND1, it's 125 pounds, and if you do ICND2, there's not 125 pounds. Down to the people, if you want to take two exams or if you want to take one exam. Me, I don't like the exams that much, so I would rather prefer doing one exam. I wouldn't do two. Uh, I don't want to go through that thing twice. Okay, so let's start with your CCNA routine and switching journey. I hope you enjoy your course. Please subscribe to my videos and if you have any problems doing the labs or practice anything, um, you can always just send me an email and I will be I will reply to you. Okay, or you can just contact me through the um, YouTube channel. Okay, now today we are going to cover chapter 1, Exploring the Network. This is part of CCNA Semester 1, Introduction net to Networks. So, here we go, let's start. Now, this lesson is divided in four sections we have a, a section 1.1 globally connected explain how multiple networks are used in everyday life now you have a fairly fairly good idea i think how why why we use the networks and what are the networks but hey cisco doesn't leave anything to chance covers everything then we move on to section 1.2 lan lan and the internet here we explain the topologies and devices used in a small to medium sized business network if you know anything about small to medium sized business network if you know how to troubleshoot and if you know how to maintain a small medium sized network then you will be able you'll be fine in that really large networks as well in here i'll do a demonstration how to initialize and reload a router and a switch then we move on to section 1.3 the networking as a platform in here we explain the basic characteristics of a network that supports communication again in a small to medium sized business and then we move on to section 1.4 the change in network environment here we explain the trends in a networking that will affect the use of the networks in small to medium sized business. And I will do a small demonstration in how to use a network shell utility called NetSH. Section 1.1 Globally Connected Network in our past and a daily life. Imagine a world without the internet. No more Google, YouTube, instant messaging, no more Facebook, no more Wikipedia. The online gaming, Netflix, iTunes, wow, what do you have there? Easy access to current information. You don't want no more price comparison websites. You no more avoiding lines by shopping online or quickly looking up a phone number and map direction to various locations at the click of the finger. So imagine all this. Imagine you don't have it anymore. Imagine my life when I was 20, 25 years ago. What I was doing, what I was studying, how I was studying. If I had to find like a president of the United States on this this year, I had to go to the library and research that president or biography if he had one. No, now these days you have the internet, uh, you research anything, boom, you open the Google or any browser, anything that you like, uh, like a search engine that you prefer, and you put the name and that comes along. Right. But I want you to imagine how life was like that then before. How, how, you, how do we live? It was terrible. You know, all we didn't have any information. All the games that we had to do, we had to kind of like invent our own games. These days, I have two kids. Both of the kids, I moved the house, for example, uh, I don't know, two years ago. And then we didn't have the internet for a week because we were changing from one house to another house with a different supplier, internet service provider. And uh, my kids, they were asking every one hour. They were saying, oh, is the internet back? Is the internet back? Is the internet back? They don't know the life without the internet. So, great. Now that we have the internet, 
uh, our information is open we have doors we can open any doors we can just look on the internet any website or any we want we can learn we can uh, invent stuff and whatever internet is is not stopping us um, well with the help of internet we can achieve quite a lot now I want you to think oh well Cisco wants you to think imagine the world 15 to 20 years from now or in the, say it says uh, 25 years from now imagine the world then how it's gonna be well everything will probably be connected you probably will be able to uh, communicate with I don't know everything in your house um, yeah I don't know even the bin will be able to tell you if it's full or empty these days you can even these days you can control quite a lot you know I was I was I was very surprised when I was young and we first got a TV that had the remote control I couldn't believe that now these days I can control my TV from here I can just start recording any show that I want to change the channel from here and everything so the internet or the networks are enabling us to do that so what do we use the internet for well what do you use the internet for what do you use the internet or network well most of the, most of us will do shopping we'll do we'll check our emails we'll check the Facebook page or social media we'll check uh, I don't know we do online banking but networking today is, is helping us to support the way we learn by watching this video you are learning I'm the instructor or lecturer of CCNA you are learning what I'm telling you um, now you might want to learn something else Java you go and find the video about the Java maybe you want to learn how to I don't know, lay bricks you go and find out the video how to lay bricks so the internet is helping us network supports the way we communicate now communication is great we I can I can make a phone call for free I can phone my home country for free before I had to pay like 10 pounds for I don't know two three minutes now it's free I can speak as much as I want for free um, including the video as well and the network supports the way we, the way we play or work and play why I want to play first <laughs> okay fine we play I can play with anyone online anytime anywhere someone is going to be around the world playing my game and enjoying as much as I do so yeah great way we play and then the way we work absolutely now this time these days yeah you can work from anywhere you don't have to be in the office to work you can work from I don't know from holiday from the beach um, people don't have, like, even this is helping for disabled people if they can't go to the work they can't take a train or they can't go to the public uh, transport they can work from home so it's opening doors for everyone so what do we use the internet for well instant messaging texting we use it free text social media a lot we check our Facebook or, or okay I don't want to say Facebook because I don't know what do you check you might be checking something else when you're watching this video but it's like a it's like a um, disease every second we check our social media what's what people are saying about us and we tell the people what we're doing and so on collaboration tools collaboration tools is like when we uh, join our forces with other teams to create something great you know uh, for example uh, you do you are uh, com completing something and we can communicate with each other and we make it better that whatever we are deciding to do web blogs now blogs for example are some people you know write down uh, for some they get they get excited or enthusiastic about something and they start writing a blog about it for example I saw uh, not long ago this lady was in the hospital and she was just moaning and moaning about the food that was served in the hospital so she started writing a blog every day she would take a picture of the food that was served in the hospital uh, after a while even the hospital started complaining they started like uh, stopping her to write the blogs because everybody was like, oh, they're, 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 her blog became very big anyway. Everybody was following her. And then wikis. We can write wikis. Our company can write wikis. For example, uh, say we troubleshoot tickets or something. Then we can write wikis. So next, next technician comes along. He doesn't have to go through all the steps that we took to troubleshoot certain tickets. He can just look at the wiki. How do we do it? The biggest, biggest wiki is Wikipedia. Every day I, I go to Wikipedia. For example, to research something. Podcasting is like a, a, a radio channel, a radio a program that was recorded and then you can go later on and download it and listen to it. And then we have a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Oh, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Mm, 
you should know if you don't know this ah you're missing lots of people they download illegal files My, Peer to peer file sharing is not meant for illegal downloads, it's for illegal, for genuine people, but it gets misused quite a lot. But we use, we use it for peer to peer, we use it to share our files. For example, I can send, uh, I don't know, my friend a big document, uh, I can upload it and then he can download it from somewhere else. That's, that's my peer to peer file share. Networking come in, in different sizes. Very smallest network that we can have is only two devices. For example, your phone. And your your uh, Bluetooth earpiece that creates a small, very very small network. But smallest network will have minimum two devices. For example, a laptop and a PC connected together, back to back, sharing documents. That's a small network. But usually we have a small home network, which we have a PC, laptop, I don't know, gaming console, TV connected to the internet, a router, wireless router uh, that, that is given like integrated router, wireless switching routine it does the whole thing then we have a small office uh, home office network where it's a bit, bit bigger we have a few more devices um, for example a few more computers hey, up to 10 computers for example they they share the files they connect it to the networks they're using the printers you know, or, or they're sharing the printer and then we have a medium to large networks such as also used in cooperation and schools can have many locations with hundreds of th or thousands of interconnected computers these are large networks. And the largest network, do you know which one it is? Have a guess. Internet. Worldwide networks. The internet is a network of networks that connects hundreds of millions of computers worldwide. Client and service. One network type is client and service, where there's, there's a server. You serve an email, web server, file server, and they say you have a clients who are accessing this server. Right? So the client access the email server for to access the emails. The client will never become a server for this server. And this server will never become a client. The roles will not change. When you have a network, client server network, it always stays. Clients that stay client, servers that say servers. So all computers connected to the network that participate directly in network communication are classified as host or end devices. So any computer that participate in the network, even though these servers, all these client machines, they are called hosts or end devices. In modern network, end devices can act as a client, a server, or both. The software installed on the computer determines which role the computer plays. Now, for example, this is the client. Because it's got a PC, small PC there, that's a server, that's acting for the server. But if you if you today you have a really, really fast and powerful client amazing clients they, 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 these guys they, they have like a 16 G, uh, 16 GB of RAM All right, that's just I don't know what that client is gonna use all that RAM for but what we can do is we can install operating system like a server operating system on this PC and then it becomes a server so it all depends on what kind of operating system you install and that the role of that machine will take over depending on what operating system for example if you install a server 2008 2012 it's a server but if you install windows vista windows 7 windows 8 windows 10 then it's a client machine so servers are hosts that have a software installed that enables them to provide information like email or web pages to other hosts on the network clients are computer hosts that have software installed that enables them to request the display and display the information obtained from servers an example, a client software is a web browser, like Internet Explorer. So, if this is a server, it's got a web page, a client will say, okay, can I see that web page, please? And the server is going to uh, send that web page to the client. The second type of network is peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, peer-to-peer -peer is the easiest uh, type of network to set up, right? You can just get two machines, two client machines, back-to-back, -back, cable them, that's it, you got a network. It's, it's got less, much less complexity than a uh, client uh, server because you don't, have a, uh, you don't have to configure the server. Lower cost since dedicated server might not be required can be used a single uh, simple task such as file and printer sharing. So for example, going back here, client and servers. This server, somebody has to configure it as a web server, email server, file server, whatever. But someone has to configure it. Plus, nobody will be sitting next in the server and and um, I don't know, uh, using it. So it's gonna be server sitting there somewhere in the corner, just serving. 
Now I was in one place where we suggested to the manager to buy the server, right? Because they were getting like, I don't know, 15 PCs, 20 PCs. It was getting really difficult to manage. So we suggested to them to buy a server and said, okay, well, no one is going to be, we don't need a keyboard for it, mouse or monitor. No one's going to be using it. The manager went crazy. He couldn't believe it. He was like, no, 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 you can't have that. Oh, I can't have a computer. There's nobody's going to be using it. Yeah, all the computers has to be used by someone. No, the servers, no. Nobody uses the server. The server is there to service these clients. If you have a client and server, for example, when I create a user here, for example, say user Tom, I create Tom. Tom will be able to log on to any of these computers, right? Then I create, Tom creates a password, say password Cisco. He will be able to use it on any computer. Username Tom, password Cisco. Go here, username Tom, password Cisco. Tom, password Cisco. No problem. Needs to change the password once, say class, then it will be able, this will take effect on any computer. Well, in peer-to-peer -peer networks, it's a bit different. Every time, every computer that Tom has to log on, you have to create a username and password there. So for example, here I have to go and create Tom, user, password, Cisco. If Tom wants to log on to this computer, I need to go here and say, okay, user Tom, password Cisco. If Tom, Tom changes his password to class on this computer, he has to remember to change it on this as well. Otherwise, he's got two passwords on different computers. Now with two computers, that's okay, manageable. Imagine if you have 10. Or 20. My god, Tom is not going to remember to change the passwords on every computer. Okay, so that's why it's less complex, but the, the disadvantage of it is there's no centralized administration and very slow. So the no centralized administration, which means that there's no one there like the server to say you can change the password once and it will take effect forever. Oh, on all devices, I should say. Okay, not as secure. Right? Because you can control security on a centralized server quite easy. And here, it's not going to be as secure. Not scalable. If you go more than 10 computers, then it becomes problematic. All these password changing, user creation, um, I don't know, all the security permissions and so on. Terrible. It doesn't, it, it's not scales at all. And all devices might act as a both as a client and server. Okay. Imagine, peer one's got a file to be shared. Now, when peer 2 wants to access that file, peer 1 is a server, peer 2 is a client. Okay, peer 2 has got a printer here to share. When peer 1 wants to access that printer, now peer 1 is a client and peer 2 is a server. So you can see, in peer-to-peer -peer network, there's no defined role. You're the server, you're the client, that's it. No. Here, sometimes you're a server, sometimes you're a client, depending on what, what you need or what you're doing in the network. Okay, that was it. That's nice and simple. Uh, we covered section 1.1. And then I uh, hope I see you in section 1.2, LANs, RANs, and the internet. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.